Hello, today we are going to study the topic of the head covering used by our sisters in the meetings of the local church. And we are going to see why that is so important and it is part of the biblical teaching for the local church. The passage that deals with that subject is Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 to 16. And to make it a little bit easier to follow through the study, we are going to divide the, this presentation in five points. The first one of them is the apostolic authority, as we see it in verse number two. It says, now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. So this word here, ordinances, means something that is transmitted to others, some, something that is received by somebody, and at the same time, he's going to pass over to somebody else. And that is translated traditions in other passages. Now, when we hear the word tradition, many people think that it's something optional, something that changed from culture to culture, uh, or even from one family to another family. But please keep in mind that the word ordinances, translated traditions in other passages here, it has to do with something that the apostles received from the Lord and they transmitted them to the churches. So it's not something that is optional. It's something that comes from the Lord himself. He was given to the apostles and the apostles with that authority that they had, they gave it to the churches. And then we keep them now in the writing of the apostles in the New Testament. So Paul is telling them, I praise you, brethren, you remember me in all things, in all the teaching that they received from Paul. They remember him and they kept the ordinances that they received. It seems that this verse is indicating that they were keeping the ordinances. They were remembering all what Paul was teaching them, but that the problem was that they were ignoring the reason behind it. And when you read from verse number three, you see that Paul said, I would have you know. And that happens also in many places in the assemblies of God's people and local churches where the practice of the head covering is maintained according to the scriptures, that there are many sisters that are following this teaching, but they don't really fully understand why they are doing it. Some people even believe that it's just something that we do, a tradition in the human sense, something that is, you know, some churches do it other churches don't. Uh, we do it, and that's it. That's part of the way that we are. But now, Paul is telling them, you need to know what is the reason behind this. Uh, there is an example in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15, where the word traditions is used directly in the King James Version to refer to what Paul received from the Lord and gave to the churches. He said, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our letters, the epistles. And you remember that in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, Paul said that you must acknowledge that what I'm teaching you, it came from the Lord. They are commandments of the Lord. So that's to reinforce the idea that the use of the word traditions in this context of chapter 11 is connected to the apostolic authority. This is a teaching that came from the apostle and he received it from the Lord himself. In the second place, and this is the most important section here, is the headship of Christ in the church from verses 3 to 9. Headship means the position of being in charge of our organization. So the headship of Christ, it means the position that of authority that the Lord has over the church. So headship is more connected with the Lord being the head and we being the members of the church. The word headship carries more the implication of submission, willing submission to the authority of the head in the church. We read in verse number three, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. So this order is given by God. This is not about superiority or inferiority. This is about position of authority, a different role that is given here. It's like in an organization where you got the manager, he's the head of the department. He has a role 
he's the person who is in charge, who has the, the authority to take decisions, and the other one has to submit to that decision. So the head of every man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. And the head of the woman is the man. That is what is according here to the word of God. The idea here is the responsibility that is given, the one who has to answer for what is happening in the organization. And of course, this is translated here clearly to the church. That's why in verse number four says, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. Why? Who is the head of man? Well, it said that it's Christ. So he's talking here in a very clear way that when a man is coming to the local church and he has his head covered, he's covering what the head is represented, that is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So you see here the head of the man and the woman are used in this passage to represent a symbol, something that is speaking of something else. And the head of the man speaks of Christ and the head of the woman speaks of man. And the head of the man cannot be covered in public meetings because that will be covering the glory of Christ. And if the head of the woman is uncovered, then is the glory of man what is being displayed. And that is what it says here in verse number six. For if the woman be not covered, let in verse number five, but every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonor her head. We cannot get distracted here. This, is, this verse doesn't justify the public participation of sisters in the meeting. Paul is dealing in this section with one problem, and that problem is the doctrine of the headship in the local church. And later in this letter and in other letters, he also speaks about the women being silent in the public meetings. But I don't want to get distracted with that topic. The point here is that the women in public uh, meetings, they need to have the head cover because the head of the woman is the man. But it cannot be the glory of man being displayed publicly in the local church. There are uh, some topics there that can be a little bit difficult to deal with. But the main point here is to remember this. Christ's headship, his position of authority in the church, is displayed in the local church through men and women. How? Well, with the uncovered head of the men in the public meeting and the covered head of the women in the meeting. Remember, 1 Corinthians is the letter that speaks more than any other letter of the doctrine and the practices of the local church, and that is the context here, the local church. Well, headships of man come from creation. It was before there were different cultures. You can go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 and 22, and you will see there that that distinction comes even before the fall before Adam and Eve sinned against the Lord in Genesis chapter 3. So when the woman was created, was to be a helper to Adam. And then Adam was placed as the head there. So some people say, well, that's something that happened only at Corinth. That's something that happens only in the first century. But see, that is not possible because when the head chief of man was instituted, that was long before there were different cultures. So Adam and Eve, they were from the same culture. And that's something that was in the creation. But we need to keep moving on here. So point number three, another very important point, because of the angels. So verse number 10 says, For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10 says, To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. This is very important. You know that when Adam and Eve sinned, there was the presence of cherubims taking care of the Garden of Eden to avoid them to go back into it. And you know also that Satan the one who instigated the disobedience of Adam and Eve. He was before an angelic creature. He was a cherubim 
and there were other angels that followed him and and of course they couldn't keep the original state anymore so today god wants that the church will be an object lesson to the angels the principalities and powers in heavenly places as they are, are as they are called here in the letter to the Ephesians, that they might see the manifold wisdom of God displayed in the church. So Satan and the other angels, they didn't respect the headship of God in heaven. They didn't want to submit to that authority and they have to suffer the consequences. And now today, when the church comes together in a public meeting, God wants the angels to see that and to show them and see, Look at that. These Christians, these believers, they are my children and they are submitting themselves to the headship of my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they are showing this in a public way. The glory of the man is covered. When the ladies in the meeting, they cover their heads and the glory of Christ is displayed when the man has the head uncovered. We also need to remember here that angels are not subject to cultural differences. Some people, again, insist that the head covering was something cultural, something that happened only at currents. But the angels, they are not subject to cultural differences. The angels, when they observe a public meeting in South America or North America or Europe or Australia or Africa, wherever, they have to see the same object lesson and that is vital. So this point is important. The verses clearly, for this cause, ought the woman to have power, a sign of authority on her head because of the angels. What a privilege that we as believers in a local church, we are given this teaching of sub submission to the headship of the Lord in this way in the local church. But point number four, it says, that the teaching from nature, verses 13 to 15, verse 13 says, judge in yourself, is it commonly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? So nature itself is teaching us that. So I've been to different countries with different cultures like Papua New Guinea and South America, and Australia, and so on. And wherever I have been, I have observed that there is a cultural difference between the way in which a man is, is keeping his, head, his hair and the way in which the women do it. So nature itself is teaching us that there is a lesson here, that the men normally, they don't try to attract the attention of people to their own heads that the ladies normally, they try to, to elaborate. I have observed that even in the most simple cultures, nature itself is teaching us that there is a difference that is constant in all the cultures of the world in the way that the women want to display honor and glory in the way that they are wearing the hair. And they say, well, nature itself is teaching us that lesson because the local church is not a place to display human glory. It's not a place to display any kind of human attraction. Everything has to be only for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, we need to emphasize that in verse number 15, hair is not the same as covering. At the end of verse number 15 says, for her hair is given her for a covering. That brings a problem for some people because they say, wait, wait a minute. This verse is telling us that the hair of the woman is a covering. So consequently, if the lady has long hair, she doesn't need to have a covering on the hair because the hair is the covering. Well, that is a wrong conclusion here because, again, Paul has been teaching that the head cover of the women in the meeting is to display that Christ is the head and not man, because the head of the woman is man, and that has to be covered in the meeting. He said that very clearly. He spoke about the angel. They need to have a lesson of the submission to the authority of the Lord. 
So why is Paul going to change everything and now to say, well, it's not important. It just, just have the long hair and that will do it. No, because Paul is talking about nature. Nature itself is teaching us that the women have a covering, a natural covering in their bodies. And by the way, the word that is used here in the original language in Greek for covering in verse number 15 is different to the word that is used in verses number five and six to speak about covering and uncovering. So you just can check that in that strong concordance of, of any other tool that you might have available. Finally, point number six, the practice of the churches of God. Verse number 16 says, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such customs, neither the churches of God. People say that we don't have such custom is saying we don't have the custom of using head covering for the woman. Again, what a contradiction. After Paul has spent so much time trying to explain the doctrine of the headship and how this is displayed in the local church with the men having the head uncovered and the women having the head covered, how is going to change everything now to say, well, we don't have such custom. He's saying we don't have the custom of being contentious, of being rebellious against the commandment of the Lord. And he said, he says here, neither the churches of God. In other words, the churches of God, the local churches were not contentious against the practice of the teaching of the head covering as Paul is presenting it here in this section of chapter 11. So he's saying this is something that is maintained throughout all the churches of God. Well, in conclusion, you can see here that to reject this teaching is to be contentious and not only back then, but over the centuries. All the so-called Christian denominations that you might think about for many centuries up to the 20th century, the beginning of the 20th centuries, all of them, they maintained and preached the teaching of the head covering of the sisters in the public meetings all of them you can read the bible commentaries for the previous centuries and you will see that that's the way that they explain this passage so today people go to the churches and they see that most of them the great majority they don't practice this teaching and they come to a church where this is practiced by one of the assemblies that gathers unto the name of the Lord, and they think that we are doing something wrong, that we are strange because we are doing something that is not practiced by the other ones, that is something uncommon. But they ignored completely that over the centuries, all these great teachers from the past, they believed, they maintained and defend the biblical teaching that was given here by Paul. So you might be asking, well, why the churches today most of them, they are not keeping. Well, you can read this quote here. Because the wearing of a head covering by women at religious services is a symbol of subjection with many churches, now that means the National Organization of Women, which is a feminist group in the United States, now recommends that all chapters undertake an effort to have all women participate in a national unveiling by sending their head coverings to the task force chairman. At the spring meeting of the task force of women and religion, these veils will be publicly burned to protest the second class status of women in all churches. Pay attention to this quote here, because that summarizes very well the reason why the churches neglected and rejected the teaching of the biblical head covering of the sisters in the local churches. Not because they discovered that their previous teachers, they were wrong. Not because they found that this was wrong, that it was not the correct interpretation, but because of fear of men, because they didn't want to offend people. They wanted to be politically correct. And then churches first said, well, head covering is going to be optional. And then later they said, we don't need to do it. And now they said, no, Paul was wrong. Or Paul was just teaching something that happened locally 
at the church at Currents. He is not talking about that. We don't need to do it today. Once again, Paul is saying we don't have such custom of being contentious, to be rebellious against the word of God and the churches of God. They are not contentious. They follow what the Bible says in regard to the order of the local church. So my the Lord help us to appreciate the tremendous privilege of practicing this doctrine of headship by the uncovered heads of the men in the public meetings and the covered heads of the ladies in the meeting because there is a great reason behind that. The headship, the position of authority of the Lord Jesus in the local church, that is a tremendous lesson to the angels. That is something that is also in agreement with nature itself and that was the practice of the churches of God.